um, embellish all kinds of different surfaces for your Thanksgiving table or for any other time. People think of painting furniture or painting walls or maybe painting even a canvas. But you know what? You can paint glass. You can paint fabric. You can paint just about anything. I um, have a wine glass here that I just painted a little pumpkin on and a little, I don't know if you can see a few stalks of wheat. Really, really, really simple. So I'll show you that. And then to match, I took just some plain napkins from that big box store. It starts with a W and ends with a T. And I did a little pumpkin to match. And real simple. But so I cute, cute, Connie. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I don't know if you can tell. There's a little bit of a shimmer on this um, napkin. Can you see it? Let me get oh, yeah. Of, um, yes. And then you can. I, I saw the shimmer on the wine glass. Okay. That's cute. Well, one of my favorite paints, you can use craft paint for um, nearly anything because it's acrylic, so it's non-toxic and it's great. But one of the um, brands that I really like, and she's not paying me for this, but I endorse her because I love her paint, is Martha Stewart, and it's multi-surface. So you can use the same paint, which I'm going to show you today, and I can put it on paper, I can put it on fabric, I can put it on glass, I don't need to prime, it's awesome. Uh, one great. thing is if you are working on something that's going to be used, you want to keep your paint below where your mouth is going to touch. And if you're using a plate or a platter, which is really pretty, by the way, if you do something like that, um, just make sure that the food, the food doesn't <laughs> touch it. Whoopsie. It's okay. <laughs> so I've got a few colors poured, and when I think of Thanksgiving, I think of food. I'm not going to paint a turkey, but I think of fruit, beautiful pears, grapes, something that you might see in a horn of plenty or a cornucopia. And you might think at first, well, if, you, if you're one of those that says, I can't even draw a stick figure, well, guess what? We're not drawn. We're painting. And fruit really is just circular. So I'm going to show you a real easy way to do a pear. And it's just three colors of paint. You want to watch? Mm -hmm. I want to join in. Can I join in? Brittany, I would love it if you would join in. All right. What colors do I have to have? Um, I'm starting with a medium yellow and a light yellow and a medium brown. Okay. okay. And the way I paint is um, pretty foolproof. If you don't believe me, you need to check out some other videos that I've done because it's called layering. So I start with the medium color. Not the lightest, not the darkest, but the medium. So I'm going to come right over here on this. Um, it's just a piece of watercolor paper, which is a really good surface for beginners to start your practicing before you move on to fabric and glass. So I'm just going to kind of do a big circle. And which, is that your yellow? That's color? my medium yellow. It has some gold tones to it. And you're using your flat, is that your flat brush? I almost always use flats. And what Brittany's talking about with the flat is a rectangular brush. Okay? It almost looks like a regular house um, painting brush, but it's a little smaller. This is a three-quarter flat. So it's three-quarter inch. But use anything you, you have. Okay, let's not get um, crazy into your supplies here. Okay? Now, that's one circle. Doesn't look like much. Now, all I'm going to do is add a little top to it. Okay? Not quite a circle, but almost. Now, if you're saying, okay, great, you guys, Colleen and Brittany can paint, and Karen has all these transfers. Hello, Karen is the graphics fairy. She has oodles and oodles of clip art. Go to graphics fairy, uh, enter pairs in her search bar, and I guarantee you will find something that you can take, print off, lay down on your surface and put some um, what I call graphite paper. You can find it in any craft store. And you can transfer your design. You don't have to be able to draw a stick figure. Just transfer your design and then you get to color in. And that's all I'm doing. No fancy strokes. I'm just filling it in. Okay? Now, it's a little rough. If you lose my voice, let me know because I turn away from your... No, I can hear you fine. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, basic, basic pair. So now I'm going to rinse my paintbrush 
with a little water and then I just take a paper towel and blot it dry okay now the other thing is my palette my fancy palette is a foam plate from the dollar store okay we're talking not a major investment for a really really fun hobby because I started painting um, when I became a stepmother and I had three little boys and it was kind of a shock to my system <laughs> so painting became my um, getaway okay now when I told you that I do a layering method I'm going in with a medium brown okay it's still in the same color family as the gold but it's obviously it's deeper but don't freak out yet you, you just gotta watch all I'm gonna do is kinda go where the curve is and define a little bit of the pear shape. Now, let me give you a little trick. I didn't go to art school. Okay, Brittany is my is my art aficionado, but I think she'll agree with me. And this holds true for anything not painting. When you use a dark color, it makes things go away. When you use a light color, it makes things come to you. So painting is nothing more than lights and darks and lights and darks. And you can just play with it as much as you want. So I'm just adding some dark in the pair, giving it a little bit of texture. And of course, you know how some of the pairs have a little bit coming up in here. You can just add a little bit. Okay, it looks blotchy. It's going to look blotchy. Don't panic. Now, it also looks flat. We want it to appear like it's coming forward. So we're going to add some light. And you could use white. I'm, I've got a light yellow because I have quite an array of paint, if I do say so myself. Mm -hmm. So your light, your, the light yellow is going to look better than white anyway. The white's going to be kind of stark. Yeah, but I'm going to layer over it. That's my foolproof method. When I look down cool. at Brittany, cause she's, there she is. OK, so now you know how a pear kind of comes out here. I'm going to just kind of add a little, little bit of semicircle. Okay, and with just a little bit right up the top. Hello. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's quite all right. We're live. Doesn't matter. Okay. Now, the reason why I use craft paints, why I've used craft paints for almost more than 17 years, I hate to say, but is for a couple reasons. One, they're very inexpensive. Two, you can find any color under the sun. You don't have to sit there and mix and mix. Walk away from your painting, come back, and what colors did you use to mix? Okay, and, and I understand artists love to do that, and I'm an artist, but I don't do that. I use craft paint. The other reason why I use craft paints, even on wall murals, is because they have a layering texture. They have a slight um, bit of translucency, meaning that the light passes through it. They're not completely opaque. If I was using tube acrylics, Brittany, are you using tubes? Are you using your artist acrylics? Sorry, I have myself on mute so you wouldn't hear the phone. Oh. Um, yeah, I'm using acrylic tubes. Okay, yeah. so you might get a little um, different effect on this pair, um, but she could also thin, if she's using acrylic, she could thin it with water too. So, you know, you. but I use, like I said, Okay, the 99 cent variety. All right, so I've got a little bit of highlight. I've got a little bit of dark. Now, I go back and I cover with the original mid yellow that, um, and I just cover the whole thing up. And you're going to say, no, you just spent all that time <laughs> highlighting and shading. Now, what you're going to do is, Unless you spend a whole lot of time painting, and I recommend you do because it's fun. If you have any little blotchiness, any little um, um, where the brush stops and starts and everything, by covering it back up with your original color, it starts to mute it. Now, right now, because it's wet, you can't see the dark and the light as well. It'll start to come through as it dries. Okay. 
if you want a little more dark, if you like the look that you had with the dark, or you like the look that you had with the white, then leave it. You don't have to layer over it. This is the way I teach my students, though, until they get a little bit more comfortable with how paint moves. And it moves differently on every surface. Glass is different than wood, is different than watercolor paper. And then basically all I would do is um, create a little hole, I don't know, where the stem comes out. Here, okay. Like I said, you want a little more dark, you could come back and you could add some more layers. Totally up to you. But without getting into a whole bunch of side load, do this, do that, this will work fine. It would actually work fine just to have, if you're going small on a wine glass, it would be fine without all the um, highlighting and shading. You're going to get that it's a pair. You could even do a green pair if you want. Okay. So you like, yeah, I don't think so. Okay, I get that. I liked it. <laughs> okay. It didn't look hard. Did it look hard? No. I don't know. But I'm used to painting pairs, too. Okay. Um, a while back, like when I first started blogging, I did a little, um, it's just on watercolor paper. It's just a painting, okay? And I did a pear and a couple pomegranates, and I did green grapes because, um, I don't know why, I just did. They're green, okay? Um, or I did this one. And again, the lettering, printed it off the computer, transferred it on, no big deal. If you have a um, personal cut or a silhouette or a cricket, you can do that. Yeah. Those are pretty large. So say you want to, um, say you want to do a napkin, and you don't want the entire napkin, you know, painted. You just want a little piece. Okay. Well, there are these great little things called, I don't know what they're called. They're foam, and they're round, and I've heard people call them spouncers, okay? They have a little piece of foam, okay, and it just goes right back into the little plastic things. But they have two ends, so you can, like, switch a roux, which I do a lot of times. But say you wanted to do some grapes, and I'm going to do purple grapes. You can do green, red, whatever, whatever floats your boat. Colleen, who makes the, those little pouncer things? Um, there are a bunch of companies that do. These happen to be Martha Stewart again. Mm -hmm. um, it's what I have on hand. They also come, they're like stencil brushes. You can find them in the stenciling section. I believe sometimes you can find them at the dollar store. Um, they look a little different, but they work just as well. So what I'm doing, let's turn my plate because I'm not used to working upside down. Okay, I dip the little in the main paint, and then I just kind of blotted it off. Okay, but you want a full, a full load, we call it, okay? A bunch of purple is what you want. You want it completely covered. And then you just go, bop. Okay, now, see how I pushed and pulled and I got, so if you go push on the paper, fabric, whatever you're doing, and then give it a little twist, you get a fuller circle. And you just, you can build a bunch of grapes in no time. These also come smaller. You could also use um, Q-tips for kids. Kids do really well with Q-tips. They do really well with this. But you just want to um, keep going, okay? You can just do a whole bunch of grapes. See how I'm getting more than one impression before I reload? Real simple, okay? So I'm just going to kind of curve it over here. I started at the bottom. Because I'm just kind of that way. Um, something else you could do if you wanted to do it really small, I'm going to show you in just a minute. One thing about these foam things, they are awesome. They are quick. You can do snowman. I just did a snowman tutorial. You can do you can do all kinds of stuff with these. But one thing, because of the foam, it loads a lot of paint, so there is a little bit more drying time. So just kind of keep that in mind with your kidlets. Okay. So, just to show you that it would work on a wine glass too, but I'm not going to do this whole big bunch of grapes, okay? This is my little, I'm just going to grab a paintbrush, but I'm going to use the non-brushy side. 
And I don't know if you can see this, but you can do the same thing. I can do this without my glasses. I'm doing really well. Okay. And you're just going to dip dot. Same, same principle. Can you see that at all? A little bit? Uh-huh. Okay. Little bit. It's tiny, but it's the same principle. Okay. So you could, you could continue on like that and um, do little grapes. Q-tips would be better on, for this size. You just play around. I recommend you play around on paper first um, because you're just going to feel better. You're just going to feel better practicing. When you paint on glass, Colleen, can you wash that afterwards, or how do you take care of that? Um, with Martha's paints, yes, you can wash. Um, manufacturers say that it is uh, top rack dishwasher safe. I've never done that. I would recommend um, washing by hand because it took me a while to paint them. So, yeah. you know, um, I've also read that with a lot of paints, there are numerous paints that are out there for glass, porcelain, that type of thing. A lot of them you can cure in an oven, and they have directions on the paint, and it'll, it'll tell you how to do it. And then once they're cured, they're supposed to be um, dishwasher top rack safe. But okay. with every brand is different. Make sure. One of the reasons why I love Martha's paints so much Aside from the fact that it's multi-surface, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm being sincere here and just telling you what I use and why I use it. Right. I can switch from fabric to glass to canvas and not add a medium, prime the surface, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. Okay, waste time, takes money, I'm not in with that. Yeah. So one of the things that I love about Martha is um, we've got the purple here, and remember I showed you that um, you saw it more on the wine glass, I guess, that it has a little bit of a, a sheen to it, if you can kind of see that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, this was a, I painted it with a flat orange, and then I came back with pearl. So she has a whole line of pearl. I'm going to show you. Okay, there's pearl and glitter. And you can, like, yeah, it's very cool. And, wow. of course, because I'm a little bit, just a teeny bit OCD, I put the color on the top so I can like oh. see. I know, I know. It's a sickness. All right. <laughs> now, so I'm going to throw a little pearl on here. If we were doing grapes for like, um, if you had a testing kitchen and you wanted to, you know, throw them up on the wall, yeah, do it. Or, um, you know, an apron or something. Maybe you don't want pearl. But it's the holidays. You need a little bit of glitz and a little bit of glitter, I think. So, you could, I'm going to try this, I'm not sure if it will work, you could take your pouncer and do just a portion, okay, in the pearl. And the reason you do just a portion, you, right now it's a big purple clump. You've got to define those grapes. So what you can do is you can just kind of add a little bit of light. And what does that do? That brings it forward, makes it look a little bit round. Okay. And again, this is pearl. Normally I would do this with a lighter color. And again, I would shade it as well, you know, underneath so that you could see. But you get the idea of where I'm going with this. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, you, could, you could even do glitter, too. And, of course, the glitter is not, I don't think it's going to show up on camera. But, um... It's just gorgeous with candlelight. It just catches, you know, the thing. So, um, let me see. We've got, okay, let's go back to the pair. Sorry, no script. Do you see where the brown is starting to show through a little bit more now? Okay, mm -hmm. since it's dry, because it's dry. The purple isn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Um, this is why I don't use oils, just so you know. Okay. Um, <laughs> So it's a layering thing. Mid color, dark, light, and then take that mid color right back over. You could do the same thing with the grapes. I've got purple. What I would typically do is go in with a darker, if you can't get a darker purple, you could go with either like a charcoal gray, um, what we call the umbers um, in the browns, a deep, deep brown, and then light to, um, to define the grapes. 
Okay, so I would just kind of go whoop and make little, so you know where the where the grapes start and finish. And then I would come right on the opposite side of the um, light, and I would put the shading. And then when I'm done, I would cover it back up with the purple, and you're going to see the light, and you're going to see the dark. Okay? All right, so we've practiced on paper, and we're almost, yeah, we've got a few minutes. By the way, folks, this is my first live video hangout. It will not be my last. If you um, have not been to my blog, just paint it. Um, or my Google Plus page, just hang in there. I'm going to pick a day every week where we do this. And if you would like to be in the Hangout where you can ask questions or paint along with me, all you need to do is let me know. And we're going to go through Christmas and um, keep going. So hopefully it turns out to be a weekly thing. And we'll learn all kinds of things to paint. Maybe some walls, who knows. Ooh. Now, how about... I'm so glad you're doing that, Colleen. I'm so glad you're doing that. You know, someone has to carry Bob Ross's torch. So, <laughs> it be moi. All right, I'm gonna. I'm still in love with pumpkins, even though I saw them on sale for a dollar ninety nine, and no, I did not buy one. They were the beautiful, you know, the Cinderella, the big flat. I love oh, they were gorgeous, and I'm like, I just cannot buy another pumpkin. But <laughs> I can paint them because when I paint them, I will have them for next year. Oh, okay. So, if you're, this is um, can you let me see. This is the same green napkin. Just like this guy, Walmart, set a four for a couple bucks. Or go to the dollar store. They have them too, but I'm not sure that they're cotton like this. Um, before you paint your fabric, wash first. It'll get the sizing out of it and then break out the iron. Sorry, got to do it. Break out the iron. And then I just tape it on a piece of cardboard. Just um, secure it so it doesn't move around. Martha's paints, I don't use um, a medium. Some people like that. It's up to you. Okay. The way I paint, I throw it on there. You saw I throw paint on there. So it's not a big deal to me. So <laughs> it makes me a huge mess and you can't see it. I'm going to do show you a quick and easy pumpkin. Kind of like the one I did. I'm going to start, Brittany, with just a regular old orange. Okay. And I'm going to just go a semicircle. Bring it down. You can do as many of those as you want. Let's do two. And then I'm going to kind of do an oval in the middle. Not an oval. I don't know. It's the center part of the pumpkin. Let's call it an oval. And I'll act like I know what I'm talking about here. That's what I call it. I call it an oval. Okay, good. Thank you. That's why you guys are invited today. <laughs> we, weren't, we weren't paid to agree with you. I know, I know. Well, I wasn't paid to, to do Martha stuff either, but I do love it. Um, if you want to use textile, it's called textile medium. Any craft store has them. Any art store has them. It will make your paint glide a little um, better, but um, you know, this will work too. Okay, so I've got two little semicircles on each side. I've got the oval in the middle. Now, this is on a darker color. If it was on light, um, it would still work. Don't, don't get me wrong. What I'm saying is I left a little bit of a mark in there, so you can almost kind of see a little bit of shading. What I'm getting at is I'm not going to shade this pumpkin. If I was, I would take that same brown, and I would go in between each semicircle, and then I would add, I could add the same yellow, actually, and then go back over it. But since we're live video here, all I'm going to do is kind of apply a second coat, even though it's still wet, and it's going to brighten it up a little bit. The fabric is absorbing a lot of the paint. But if I come along and do the semicircles, I don't know if you can see this. I can't because I don't have my glasses on. So who knows what this looks like. Hey, Colleen, can you move back just a tiny bit closer to the camera so I can yes. see up higher? Okay, awesome. I couldn't. Thank you. I'm, okay. my, I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> Vanity over precision at this point. Okay. I rinsed my brush. You don't really have to, um, because of the color, 
you need to rinse your brush when you're working with acrylics from the standpoint that it'll dry out and your paint will dry in your brush and it's no good. Okay, so now what I have is some pearl in the same color family. Um, and it's by Martha. And it has a pearl on top, so I know. And yes, my pearls are separated from my glitters. <laughs> never know. Okay. So I'm going to do the pearl, but I'm going to use it as if I was using a highlighter. Where are you going to highlight? Where you think the pumpkin is has the curve. So for one, I want to do the edges, just like I started. Fast, people, see? This is not rocket science. It's fast and easy. And I know you're saying, well, yeah, easy for you. You've done it. Yeah, I have done it. Keep that in mind. I've done it for years. But I have fun with it, so I do it more. If you like something, you tend to do it more. And I happen to like paint. I'm going to try and clean up this bottom so it's not quite so yucky. One time I actually did um, a local news and painted for three hours on their whole news segment. I painted a door, an entire door, like a scene. Oh my for gosh. Wow. For three hours. I mean, it was good TV time, but it was like, when <laughs> is this over? So a half an hour was really good, but I'm covering a lot of material. I just wanted you to know that you can embellish nearly any surface. The trickiest surface is plastic. Plastic's kind of a pain. Um, so we won't go into that. We're having fun. We're doing glass. We're doing fabric. And we're adding pearl. Now, of course, so you've got to do something up at the top. Same thing, right? You need a stem. You could do the wheat. You could do fall leaves. You could do scrolls. I mean, it doesn't have to be, you know, anything extravagant. Have fun. You could do, um, if you really wanted to do like a nice gift, you could behind it do a monogram, you know, of, of whoever's family that you're giving it to and then do the pumpkin over that or do the monogram over the pumpkin, whichever. But I'm just going to take the same brand because I happen to have it and Photoshop and just do a little down and then I'm going to tighten up this little pumpkin. And you're going to let that dry, and then um, I would press it on the opposite side or use a press cloth, and you can press it on this side with a press cloth like a t-shirt or a um, some, some type of press cloth. And that's going to kind of set the, um, the paint into the fabric, and it's going to be washable. You can wash it in the machine, and it works great, especially for a napkin. Okay, you want to be able to wash a napkin. So I really enjoyed this, and I hope that you visit um, Just Paint It, as well as Pretty Handy Girl and The Graphics Fairy, because all three of us kind of, Brittany has the most awesome paint tips. If you're getting ready to do um, some painting, um, check out her little paint button, and Karen has graphics for everything. So if you're in doubt, just paint it. Thank oh. you. Yay. Oh! Oh! Yay. Yay. <laughs> Yours looks so much better. That's a long time. <laughs>